Question one then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 2. Eight mark question. Lines in a triangle. And it's the standard one. Find the equation of one of the types of lines. Altitude, median, perpendicular bisector. Find the equation of another one. And then find where they cross. Where's the point of intersection? And it's even got the diagram drawn for you. So you can check your answers and keep a reference of what parts you're looking at. If there wasn't a diagram, you should really draw a sketch yourself. And that diagram actually seems to be fairly accurate. So you can compare gradients to whatever gradient you've got in your answer to see if you're on the right track. Anyway, find the equation of the altitude through C. Well, there's the point C. And the altitude through C means a line that goes from C through the triangle to the opposite side and hits it at right angles. Well, it's a line. You want the equation of a line. So you need two things on it. A point and its gradient, or two points, or a point and its angle, but in this case it's a point and its gradient. To get the gradient of that line, you've got a comparison line. The line AB is perpendicular, so get the gradient of AB. You can put in a formula if you like, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or even delta y over delta x. So that's going to be, well, sometimes it's actually easier to put them in the diagram, so you it would keep you right going from A to B. So you can say negative 4 take away negative 1. X is 2 take away negative 1. It's the same as looking up here, but we just see all these numbers all over the place. Sometimes it's clearer in the picture. So that means you've got negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3, over 2 plus 1, which is 3, which means the gradient of AB is negative 1. That gets the first mark. Which means the perpendicular gradient will be the negative of the reciprocal. Now, you should just be able to put that down and the mark just seems to be for stating that result. If you wanted, you could put a statement down. The gradient of AB times its perpendicular gradient should come to negative 1, which means that the perpendicular gradient will be positive 1. That gets a mark. Now you just put it all together. y minus b equals mx minus a, if you want to do it that way. Or you could use y equals mx plus c, and then work out what the c comes to. But I think I'll just stick with this. I'll just specify that again. The gradient I'm using is 1, and the point I'm using is the only point I know on the line, which is 7, 3. So that's the a and the b. So y minus the y coordinate. Is the gradient times x minus the x coordinate. So y is going to be, well, that's just x, that's minus 7, that's plus 3, so y equals x minus 4. I guess the last mark. Now you could do it as y equals mx plus c. Wasn't going to, I'm not going to do it next time. It's just and then just feed in those facts again to figure out what c is. So that when y is 3, m would be 1, x is 7, and then whatever c is. So c would be 3, take away the 7, c would be negative 4. So y equals 1x minus 4, as before. But you're probably going to be doing it that way. Now part B, again for the three marks, what's the equation of the median through B? So from B, you draw the line through the triangle till it hits the middle of the opposite side. Well, it'd be handy if that had a name so you could refer to it when you're talking about the gradient and so on. So I think I'll start off by saying this. I'll say M is midpoint of AC because I'll need to know what that is. So what is the midpoint? Well, it's halfway between them. It's halfway between the x-coordinates. It's halfway between the y-coordinates. So it's halfway between negative 1 and 7. And it's halfway between negative 1 and 3. Which means the midpoint's going to be that 6 over 2, which is 3. That's 2 over 2, which is 1. 
doing that gets a mark now to get the equation of that line I need its gradient well this time I've got two points on it so I can just say the gradient of BM will be difference in the y coordinates whoops difference in the x coordinates just using it here then because it's BM just be careful because there's numbers all over the place so it's going to be Y Y I'm going B to M 1 take away negative 4 well it doesn't matter if you do it the other way around as long as you do them both the same way around either both times start here or both times start there when you're doing the subtraction obviously it doesn't matter when you're adding over 3 take away 2 well, 1 take away 4, that's 1 plus 4, that's 5. 3 take away 2, that's 1. So it's quite a steep line then because the gradient is 5. One step along, five steps up. And it does. It is very steep. Doing that gets a mark. Now that I've got everything I need, I've got a point on it and I've got its gradient, you can leap in with y minus b equals mx minus a. I'll just restate what these things stand for m is 5 and the a b come from the point where is it 3 1 where that's the a and that's the b so y minus the y coordinate is m the gradient times x minus the x coordinate so y will be 5x minus the 15 but plus the 1 so y is 5x minus 14. There's the third mark. Part C. Determine the coordinates of the point of intersection of the altitude through C, that was the one from part A, and the median through B, that was the one from part B. In other words, What's this point here? What's this point of intersection? So we've got simultaneous equations. As at that point of intersection, the coordinates have to fit the equations of both of these lines at the same time. So that means that the y coordinates have to be the same. Well, the x and y coordinates be the same, but specifically the y coordinates must be the same. So this must equal that. But I'll just give them names. I would have had them in the previous two parts. I would have named them there one when I got the first one, two, the second one. Because to find the point of intersection, if I've got at least one of them in the form of y equals or x equals, the best way of doing that is using substitution rather than elimination. So I'm going to substitute one in the other. I'm actually going to put this one down first. So I'm really going to substitute two in one, which means that I'm going to put equation two where I see the y in number one just to avoid negatives. You could write them that way around, but then you'd have to swap sides. The y-coordinate should equal the y-coordinate because there's only one point where they cross. They have, coordinates have to be the same. So bringing that across, 5x minus x. Bringing that across, negative 4 plus 14. So 4x equals 10. So x equals 10. I put, I've, said it, I've said it now, I'll put it down. So I don't need to not, you can't leave it, it's 10 over 4. That's 5 upon 2, or 2.5 if you want. I guess a mark. And then to find the corresponding y-coordinate, just substitute that. Or 2.5 if you want. And whichever one takes your fancy, whichever one you think is going to be easier to calculate it from, that one looks easier, but that would still give the same answer. In which case it's going to read... 5 upon 2, or 2.5, minus 4 for the y-coordinate. So 5 upon 2 minus 8 upon 2 is minus 3 upon 2. Or negative 1.5 if you want. But I think I'll finish that off by saying that point of intersection is the point 5 upon 2, negative 3 upon 2. Or if you wanted, that point of intersection was 2.5, negative 1.5. You can always check your calculation just by putting that answer into this one, just to see if it works. Doing 5 times 5 upon 2, taking away 14 and seeing if it comes to negative 3 upon 2. And it will do it because 5 fives are 25. That's 25 over 2. 14 is 28 over 2. 25 take away 28 is 3, negative 3. So negative 3 upon 2. So you know you've got it correct.